Hello and welcome to Curated Spaces, the podcast that explores the stories behind spaces reimagining how we stay, work and play. Join me, Molly Cooper, as I sit down with founders, owners and thought leaders to hear about their journey of bringing a space to life. Great spaces shape our lives. They inspire, nurture and connect us. But most importantly, they bring us together to share life's milestones with the people who mean the most to us. So whether you're a traveller, foodie or design seeker, join us as we celebrate the power of spaces and the brilliant people behind them. Today I'm in Richmond at Bingham River House, a fabulous members club and place to stay in the heart of this West London neighbourhood. With lawns rolling down to the Thames, gorgeous interiors and signature freestanding copper baths, community, wellness and celebration are at the very heart of this space. I'm so happy to welcome Samma, who transformed Bingham River House into the beautiful space it is today, and I can't wait to hear about her journey of bringing it to life. Samma, welcome to Creative Spaces. How are you today? I'm good, thank you Molly. And what a beautiful day we have for it. The sun is shining here in Richmond. It is. And I'm so excited to sit down with you and hear about the story of this beautiful building. Um, before we do, I'd love to hear a bit about you and your background and how you've come to be here at Bingham River House. Yeah, thank you. Um, so my parents bought Bingham River House in the 80s. So we actually grew up, we lived in wow. here for a few years. Um, my They ran a nursing home business and... Um, my mother's from Kenya, my dad's English, and then I took over running it when I was just 22, so about 20 years ago. Wow. Um, not knowing anything about running a hotel or restaurant, but <laughs> um, so made lots of mistakes along the way. But, but here we are and learn, learn from those mistakes, it yeah. feels like. Yeah. Amazing. So could you help set the scene a little bit for our, for our listeners? We're here in Richmond. Can you sort of describe the area a bit for people listening in? Yeah. Well, Richmond is like the Arcadia of London traditionally. So it's where, you know, hundreds of years ago, kings and queens Mm. would come on for their weekend breaks. Uh, We've got Richmond Park. We're literally right on the river. Um, We're about 10 minutes walk from Petersham Nurseries, which people Mm. know about. Um, So it feels a very sort of bucolic setting, even though we're just like 20 minutes from or 30 minutes from central London, depending which part of London and the traffic. Um, And yeah, so that's... It, Richmond's got Richmond Park as well, the deer, and it's just a very beautiful part of London, South West London. Yeah, it's so cool. And especially on a day like today, so much greenery, beautiful buildings. It's really lovely. And of course, going down to the river, just such a nice pocket of London, mm. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's dive into Bingham River House then. I'd love to go all the way back. I know this place has an amazing history mm. um, that I'd love to hear a little bit about. Yeah, so it was built in 1740, so it was originally like a merchant's Georgian house. Mm -hmm. Um, No one of particularly notability lived here apart from at the end of the 19th century, um, turning into the 20th century, was um, a lesbian couple who were poets, and they wrote under the pseudonym Michael Field. Um, So when my parents bought the property, they they didn't know that history, but we found it out later. (laughs) And we since named all the bedrooms after their poetry. So Richmond at at that time, turn of the last century, was like the second Bloomsbury. So they would host people like Yeats and um, other famous writers and poets. Amazing. Um, So, yeah, they were a very obviously unusual story that they were lovers, writers, um yeah that's so cool and the building itself was actually two townhouses wasn't yeah it? yeah so it's two townhouses joined together by lady Anne bingham who lived so that was prior to them actually yes another person of notoriety <laughs> um that she is related to like the spencer family so princess diana's family so that was the Bingham that ah. lived here in the um, 1800s. Hence the name. Hence the name. So yeah. quite a few big female characters in yeah. this past, it feels yeah, like. Yeah, true. Which true. I really like. Yeah. Okay, and then fast forward a few years. <laughs> yeah. And your parents took it over. What sort of state was it in when they when they found the space and decided to yeah, take it over? Yeah, it was a bit of a um, bleep hole. <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to swear. <laughs> It was like a seven, it was actually going to be bulldozed in the 60s. Yeah. So it was like, you know, brown carpet. Um, it was a bit, yeah, it was a B&B, but a bit sort of DSS, people mm. peeing in the beds. And oh, <laughs> so it wasn't that pleasant. Um, and they made it, my parents sort of tran- changed it first into being more of a, a 
still bed and breakfast still didn't have a proper restaurant but they smartened it up a bit in the mm-hmm. in the in the 90s and um and then i took over in 2001 but yeah i i learned from them they ran nursing homes which was a different business obviously but they made them like hotels so i learned about hospitality for my parents yeah and do you have any memories of growing up or spending time here when you were a child um, not much. It was only a few years, so we moved out when I was 11. But um, I don't know, crazy chef tales or, <laughs> um, uh, you know, somebody... Um, yeah, not not particularly. <laughs> I was going to say somebody... Uh, what's that word when you when you flash at the window? Somebody oh, yeah, flashing at the window, <laughs> that kind of thing. But it was um, a bit of a haze. It was an interesting childhood, definitely. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. So then what made you decide to get involved age, yeah, in, your, in your 20s, very young to... Yeah, but my mum was going to sell sell the property because ah. it was losing money. It was, um, you know, my, my brother had been running it. He didn't want to do it anymore. So it was... It was, um, yeah, I, I could just see the potential. And at that time, mm-hmm. beginning of 2000s, there was this new sort of trend of like boutique hotels or smaller properties. Before yeah. that, um, luxury hotels were always like big country houses or in cities, big hotels. So mm-hmm. it was the beginning of like smaller boutique, which came a bit later, I think, properties. And I could see, I had that vision that it could be something different like that yeah and it's funny because it was such a shift and a few spaces i've spoken to have said that they were there and they'd seen this sort of shift towards boutique hotels smaller spaces unique unique identities within the space and aesthetics um so yeah it was definitely a big shift and i feel like this is such a good building for that with all the character yeah and so much potential as you say and what were you most excited about or what were you trying to really do with the space when you took it over um, I think the restaurants, so I'd worked, so I studied English at uni, but I always worked in restaurants when I was, mm-hmm. and, and if you remember that was the time of like Marco Pierre White and mm-hmm. Gordon Ramsay was getting famous. So I had this very glamorous um, perception of working and running a hotel and opening a restaurant there would be yeah. would be like that. And it really wasn't. It was <laughs> a lot of early <laughs> mornings and late like finishes like hospitality is and um but I was yeah really passionate about food and drink and my partner at the time and father of my kids he worked actually for Marco Pierre White so he helped us set up the restaurant and we did eventually get a Michelin star between 2010 and 2012 so it took about like seven eight years ten years Mm -hmm. but it was our dream we found the most amazing chef Shay Cooper who is now at the Lanesborough and yeah we got a Michelin star in this tiny little townhouse in the you know in suburbia yeah which is brilliant so, isn't yeah. it and what kind of um influences were you pulling from or were you trying to celebrate a certain thing with the food or was it just happy to go with with their ideas that they brought um well because of the building you know this sort of georgian british background at that time we were looking for a british chef who mm-hmm. could really um be or like you know like represent Britain and yeah. so we had you know he he's he obviously his food was contemporary and it had a twist but it was like he had a, he'd grown up under working under British chefs mm-hmm. and so he brought that influence with him yeah um yeah and I think because because it's a small property it's not it was always gonna we wanted to make it somewhere where it would be a special event or an occasion to Mm. come to so that's why I suppose we went in that food direction yeah absolutely and it it marries really well with the the whole sense you get you walk in it is like walking to an old townhouse yeah but it's not stuffy in any way it feels very light very fresh um and so we're not mission star anymore by the way so if anyone's listened to this don't worry it's not (laughs) we have we have shifted a lot over the last 10 years again from that so yeah yeah. because of course now you have um is it Stephen Stephen Edwards yeah yeah yeah. but it's a a lot more relaxed dining experience and and also with the members club which we will probably come to which we opened in lockdown but it's yeah a lot of people come and hang out here every day Mm -hmm. for work or um any or regular stay regularly as well so we've wanted to bring in much more of a relaxed homely atmosphere yeah, which you definitely get when you walk in. It's mm. very welcoming, very warm. It's a little buzz when you walk in through that door. It's, it's really lovely. Um, and in terms of when you took the space over, 
did you have to do much work in terms of the interiors and did you decide to focus on the food and then tackle that or was it very much a sort of holistic approach to yeah no the interiors came first so the first time uh well we gutted it pretty much no well before we gutted it um I was when I was 20 at that time 22 or something we went and bought me and my partner went and bought some paint from B&Q and there was this awful like patterned wallpaper it especially be probably be quite cool now but we just painted the walls in the dining room red and that was because it was like this horrible patterned wallpaper anyway we've done about three major refurbishments in the last 20 years so one where we went black wallpaper and a lot of glass and crystal and we did it again in 2008 before we got the mission star and most recently we've done another refit uh, with Nicola Harding mm-hmm. who's an incredible interior designer she started as a garden designer she's done places like Beaverbrook yeah. and to bring in that um so sort of taking it back more to its traditional English um Georgian architectural roots so mm-hmm. yeah made, so this made it feel more class made it feel more classic yeah, and it does feel classic. I think the rooms downstairs, like that big, lovely lounge, but it yeah. doesn't feel stuffy at all. Like no. we were saying, with that huge sort of marble top counter, yeah. it feels like you're in this like lovely big kitchen in the country, yeah. and you're about yeah. to crack open a glass of whatever, you know. And yeah. the high ceilings and the light and the color palette, yeah. it's classic exactly. but very fresh. I'd say. Yeah, yeah, that's the that was the aim of it. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and, I, and I think it's really interesting you asked that what kind of came first because I think definitely the yeah the the you know the aesthetic of something is really important if you know curated play yeah. it's all about that and it, it, it and it's so important and it's really easy to get it wrong as well <laughs> <laughs> so I think with Nicola Harding she's really got um the, the personality and the essence because it's very easy to sort of copy and paste a look and feel but mm. um she really gets the, the sort of personality and the soul of something yeah um, i mean i'm th- as soon as you said that i was thinking of all the paperbacks yeah i think that's such yeah, a yeah, yeah. useful yeah. thing to have done yeah huh? so that yeah that's connected with obviously the literary background yeah. and um so we had a lot of time talking about um yeah talking about who's lived here in the past and how we want people to feel and and so on so yeah and some of the, some of the furniture we bought like this table that you're on is something that I've picked up so there's there's lots of pieces in the chair as well that we've picked yeah. up from local antique markets and things as well to bring in um just um <laughs> with history and yeah. That, yeah a collection yeah. of pieces yeah, just exactly. like you would in an old home yeah, almost exactly yeah. Well, yeah. you kind of spoke about it then. Let's move on to the space today. So now a huge part of what you offer is the members club, obviously. Mm. And how did you decide to sort of transition into that sphere? And what did that look like? Um, I suppose a lot of things, when you're running a small business, you don't, you sort of go with the flow a bit <laughs> and you um, needs must as well. So at that, you know, this happened in lockdown mm. when we were closed and locked in <laughs> lockdown. <laughs> Um, it had been when we worked with Nicola Harding, we'd sort of thought about, oh, our members club would be lovely, but we, 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 it was very hard to see when we were closed, yeah. how we would do that. So lockdown gave us a wonderful opportunity to try it because, you know, nobody was going anywhere. We were closed and we reopened in, um, March, 2021, where the only thing you could open was workspace. So that's how mm. we reopened. Um, we've always had this issue. It, well, it's not necessarily an issue in a bad way, but we've always had this thing that people thought, oh, it's a private house, I can't go into it. Ah. So, um, you know, we're not on the main high street, we don't have a massive grand entrance, it does feel like a private house. Mm. So it seemed, hmm, why don't we actually, you know, pl- work with this and, and play to our favour? We have also know the local area, we know that people's habits have completely transformed since lockdown yeah. with most, a lot of people working hybrid, working from home, but who wants to work from home really? Yeah. So often people are going into cafes to work or... So it, it seemed, and also, um, sorry to <laughs> rambling a bit, but um, no, we also it. had our wellbeing um, business, which I had for seven years nearby, which was a yoga studio, which had a membership model already mm-hmm. and had workspace, which we had changed into like a gym area. But so we already knew the membership could work yeah. and people would use it as a place to come to work. 
so the, the the wellness studio closed we had lockdown and then we decided to bring in this workspace mm -hmm. membership club option within the river house so i suppose it was something that we'd thought about for some time but the world situation yeah enabled it to happen and and answering the needs of our like community really yeah and actually it's been so interesting to hear i mean everywhere was just so affected by covid mm. just one day everything stopped mm. Mm. and how spaces had to think about what they could do in this completely different climate and there was no like oh this could be six months could be a year could yeah. be two years like is this forever now yeah um so it's so lovely to see that something's come out of that that's so positive and now is giving so much back to the space and yeah. have you noticed a shift in how the space is used or the people that come here now that you have the big membership um club too yeah um well people are using it it's always a surprise when you as a business person and you have an idea for something new and it actually works like, <laughs> like getting the mission started like wow we actually got we the mission something. started yeah. like it, you you often you sort of have these it's just i think yeah for anyone who's thinking of starting their own thing just yeah do dare to dream and and mm. then it is amazing what what how the universe yeah. can give it to you so as uh, like i've yeah it, it it's as we hoped and expected that people are coming here every day almost to do their work we have had people become great friends they've started working together doing business together people have found investors for their business through the through our membership community i don't think we've had a marriage yet but um <laughs> yeah hope there has been a little bit of romance i hear and and it's, you know, I think everywhere has, has found that, I suppose lockdown really, we realised how important it is to be able to be with, you know, we are social beings, to be yeah. with our peers, our community. So there there had been, a, there was a real um, sort of sense of um, wanting to dive in. So people coming to events on their own mm. and then meeting people. So dinners, comedy nights, DJ nights and so on. Um, which I don't know if we would have had that impact if COVID hadn't happened. Yeah. There <laughs> so was, was, I know, <laughs> that year after COVID for like, it was just a blur of reconnecting with everyone you hadn't seen for two plus years mm. and trying to do all the things you hadn't done, the theatre, DJ nights, the everything. Yeah, totally. um, and I can imagine as well out here in Richmond, it's so close to central London, but so nice if you can, if you live around the corner and you can walk back at the end of yeah. the evening. Yeah absolutely yeah so I, I love how it's become a real part of the the community and the neighborhood here yeah. in richmond yeah. one other thing i really did just want to shout about because i loved it was your <clears throat> event you did recently the angel investor meetup was it i don't know if you could tell us a little bit about how you were thinking of evolving those things and what sort of role you want to play like you just said helping people get investment yeah, yeah. Um, well, the Members Club has sort of evolved to be more entrepreneurially focused mm -hmm. and that's where we're um, focusing again our energy. So so everyone is welcome to be a member, but I think it seems that those that really want to be part of the community seem to be those that are running their own business. I think that's partly yeah. because of the area that we're in. So Richmond has the high, one of the highest concentration of startup businesses, the borough of Richmond, unusually. Really? And it's um, not, not the largest, but one of the largest. Yeah. And I think it's the fourth um, highest per capita CEOs in any other part in the no place way. in the country. So I think Kensington, Chelsea is number one and then the city of London. There's something like 3,000 or just under wow. 3,000 CEOs that yeah. live in this area. So anyway, it attracts people that are doing big things, yeah. having big jobs, starting big, you know, big, big ideas and got businesses. And because of our location, like we're on the riverside, it is, there's, you know, we, you met me while I was working in the garden, um, people, there are different rooms that you can work in. So it's really, I think, you know, to get out of your normal home office environment or office to somewhere that is very green you know a hundred years ago these poets walked past and found yeah. it as their creative inspiration place so i think it's we've got that legacy of history that it is mm -hmm. a place for creativity and inspiration i've got um we've got loads of people who say they come they get the, their best work done here mm. um so that's where we're focusing the club to be a real i suppose um hub for during the week because obviously we still have loads of leisure guests that love to come and enjoy cocktails mm. and you know raunchy times in the rooms and whatever <laughs> 
but sort of during the week, Monday to, to Thursday or whatever, because most people's weekend starts on Friday yeah. these days anyway, <laughs> um, people are really getting their head down and getting some exciting things done. And I'm also a, um, a bit random, but I'm also a yoga teacher. I teach meditation. For example, we had a meditation session this morning and having grown up from stre stressed out business parents, mm -hmm. parents who were stressed out business people. I've always been really interested by well-being and how yeah. that impacts, you know, our, our life and everything. Yeah. yeah. So, so being this sort of home for entrepreneurs, but also offering them well-being as mm. well as a place to work and play, but really a place to sort of them to nourish themselves. Yeah. So that's our next phase that we're looking at. And we are, we are one of the, um, companies that have pitched to raise money to pitch to bring in some wellness facilities like ice baths and brilliant and so on so that's a slightly new direction it's sort of like if it's like everything's because we, we, we are in this for the long game and it's you know it's a family business that we've had for years it, so it's like everything happens quite organically and mm. is evolving i'd love to say it's like a a planned <laughs> planned change but it no it's not it's not planned i think but that is the future sort of where we're oh that's slightly, really exciting yeah but i think already towards. it does feel like wellness is really at the heart of mm. things here that room was set out for yoga we walked past yeah. earlier and i yeah. know you do loads of events around healing sessions yeah and all these energy workshops yeah um and i know you say it's a more forward thinking thing but how how long have they been running and what sort of reception have you been having from those? Yeah. Um, well, I suppose about 10 years, because before I had the yoga studio, I was actually teaching yoga here ah. in, in, the, um, in the hotel. And then with the membership, um, which we started in 2020, one of the pillars, so we've got three main pillars of that mm -hmm. being people wanting, we felt that people want to be brilliant. So lots of opportunity to upskill, learn things. Yeah get together the social mm -hmm. aspect but also be still is this wellness piece that's more around um calm and de-stressing meditation breath work etc just sitting in the garden could be yeah. part of that um so sorry the question was <laughs> no I, I was just i love the pillars i can't want to yeah. go i can't want to go into those now <laughs> especially the um the be calm piece because be I, still, I think especially yeah. That's so interesting living here in London where life moves at a million miles an hour. Yeah. Taking that time out, I'm rubbish at it. So yeah. anywhere that can... Well, so am I. Yeah. <laughs> you saw me, I was quite stressed before we started this conversation. I had one of those days of emails from bank managers and blah, blah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, we've got people like, I don't I think she wouldn't mind me saying there's an astrologer, for example, who lives in Battersea. And I, I didn't even know, but she said, oh, you know, I booked into the Bingham for a weekend break for myself to treat myself, yeah. to come and be by the river, have a bath in the copper yeah. bar. I was like, wow. So even just coming from Battersea or somewhere, it can give you that, um, yeah, that reset. So we're, we're, I suppose we, one of the words we've used ourselves and is a, is a retreat. Obviously we're not mm. in Devon or Cornwall, but it's. It's a lot, it's a retreat from yeah. London. Yeah. You know. No, a hundred percent. You look out now over the, the lawns and the glittering river in this mm. weather and then fields beyond that. It yeah. does feel, you could be in the middle of the countryside. Yeah, yeah. totally. Uh -huh. And we've got bikes here as well. So people can cycle. We've got kayaks, we've got paddle boards. So oh, amazing. You can, you can really like give yourself a... Yeah, sort of, um, I think that's a retreat, you know. I yeah, think, I think oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and so then looking ahead, you said wellness, you're really keen to build on that mm. and build out that aspect. Is there anything else you're looking at? I know that COVID sort of settled and a few spaces sort of looking where there are and the things they were planning on doing before the pandemic put a huge span in the works. I don't know mm. if there's any other rethinking or stopping and taking stock that you're doing at the moment. I think, um, no, I think bringing more of the well-being into the river house is our is our main focus mm. so having a dedicated yoga studio again Brilliant. in in the space we would love to be able to use our river frontage more so if anyone's listening to this that can help us get our moorings from port of london authority <laughs> um because the river i don't i mean i just love i'm a water sign yeah, so i love the i love the river and I think it is more used than it ever was, you know, yeah. with, as I said, with people paddle boarding and kayaking, but we would love to have our own mm. mooring so that we could have some 
vessel or something on on the water. That'd that, be amazing, that would be wouldn't it? The future, yeah. yeah, there's nothing like water to reconnect, and actually, yeah. already with the baths, and you just have ice baths. Then. Yeah, exactly. So it's like that could be really exciting or really yeah. sort of apt. Totally. Um, fields sort of explore. But even yeah, even just looking at water. Apparently, within like twenty minutes, you're it completely. It's like you know having a massage or something. It really yeah. resets you. And I love. And we obviously we've got the we can you can walk along the towpath as well. So mm-hmm. it's it's quite special. Very special. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's very special. I really love it. Mm. Um, well, I guess just before we we go, and it's been really lovely to chat. I do have a quick game of dream spaces uh, to play with you. But I'm going to ask you three questions. Um, if each one you get to reply with the space of your choice, it can be somewhere you visited, somewhere on the wish list, somewhere you've always wanted to go. Um, so I'll kick off with the first one, which is very apt uh, considering our last conversation. Where are you escaping from it all, having a detox, getting away from the hustle and the bustle? Um, well, I love Kerala in India. Oh, wow. So that's, yeah, that's my favourite place to go. But I've never been... Is it where I've been or where I'd like to can be where anything you want. Okay, well, I've never been to Bali, so I would Ooh. love to go to Bali. So Kerala yeah. and Bali, oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> two-week trip. Yeah. Have you spent much time in Kerala? Just just once, actually, but it is my... Um, I, went before, I, I meant to go a few times since, but it, lockdown happened, but it's... Um, yeah, yeah, found it very Lockdown special. Lockdown did happen. Didn't it? <laughs> and were you there for any yoga? Or? Yeah, I was helping on a yoga retreat, and wow. I had my own retreat when I was there as well. As in, I went on to an ashram. Yeah. Amazing. Okay, mm. well, this one's slightly different. Um, your ultimate birthday party. Where are you hosting mm. it? Well, um, I will be fifty in a few years' time, not long. Um, and I'd love, I think, somewhere around Ibiza. I know it's a bit of a cliche, but no. I do love, you know, I love house music. I love dancing. I love the sea. I love the food around there. So mm. maybe on a boat. Yes. In Ibiza, around Ibiza. <laughs> I think get that on the list for the fiftieth. Yeah. <laughs> Send and save the dates now. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then finally, it's your once in a lifetime bucket list trip. Where are you going and are you staying anywhere special? Oh, God, I feel like I live a very sheltered life. Um, I, don't, I can't <laughs> think of any bucket list. I mean, I'd love to. It's not really that exotic or luxurious, but I'd love to go to Burning Man. <laughs> okay. Know. So, um, yeah, I don't know if everyone knows it's a festival, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I'd love to go to Burning Man. That's amazing. Mm. No one, no one's actually said a festival yet. So, okay. Yeah, <laughs> love that. What would you? What would be your contribution at Burning Man? Everyone has to sort of chip in, don't they? Yeah. When I am, I just we said earlier, I've just done an ecstatic dance course, oh. so I could lead ecstatic dance and um, yeah, maybe some yoga or chanting or something as well. But that, that would sounds be my very Burning Man. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Okay. Well, let me know when you go. I'll tag along. Um, <laughs> but it was so lovely to chat. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Molly. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Curated Spaces podcast. For more information and content around any of the spaces we feature, head to our website or Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe to have new episodes delivered straight to your inbox every Wednesday. And if there's a special place in your life that you'd like to hear on the Curated Spaces podcast, please do get in touch as we're always on the lookout for more brilliant spaces to share with the world.